a couple months back i made some videos on left hand pinky exercises and also how to play octaves more comfortably if you have small hands or a short pinky it's really important not to neglect this finger because it is usually the weakest and needs special attention However, everything comes with exceptions and sometimes you're going to notice moments in repertoire where it's a better idea to play the third finger instead. Hey, this is Ina Langerman from Violina.live helping you along your musical journey. In this video, I'm going to share with you two examples from standard repertoire where I decided for myself not to use the pinky in a certain place and I'm going to explain why I made that choice. But of course, please take everything with a grain of salt, everything I mention here and demonstrate. That is because all of our hands and anatomies are different from one another. So what I am sharing with you here may or may not serve you 100% and they're based purely on my own personal experiments. As with all my content, if anything I say here is the complete opposite of what you do in your lessons or what your teacher is telling you, then just please disregard it. So both examples in this video will involve fast passages and have a similar reason as to why I chose to use a third finger instead of the fourth. The first example is from the orchestral excerpt Don Juan by Richard Strauss, which is asked on numerous auditions, pretty much every audition asks for it. And uh, this is one of those examples uh, where we go up to the high D under pressure usually. And I decided to up to hit the high D with the third finger instead of the fourth. Of course, I can also use the fourth finger just fine. However, there is a reason I chose the third finger here and it has to do with how much my arm has to come around. Because this passage is very quick and it usually has to be done under pressure, I decided to minimize how many small motions I have to make. And of course, minimize the shifts too. There's only so much we can do. It's already a very difficult passage. But notice over here, the part where I have to cross over to the A string, I have to come around with my elbow, right? So this is when I come around with my elbow before uh, going to the 16th notes. Right here. If I decided to use the pinky, I would have to come around even more. And actually, you see how this is a lot of extra that I would have to come around if I did pinky instead of third finger. If I do third finger, this is, this is all I have to do, like I'm already set. And because this passage is fast, uh, the, the fewer motions that I make, the better. Because I have a short pinky, that means I have to bring my knuckle very close to the fingerboard especially in the high positions. And that's why I have to come around extra to hit it with the pinky. So uh, if you look back in the fourth position before we go up, when I'm on the A string, if I decided to do the pinky, I would have to come around even more. This creates a problem in fourth position because this means that the fingers they would be over rotated and we don't want that. If the fingers are over rotated, what happens? They start to go on their nails and that's really bad technique. That's going to affect your intonation and also it's going to slow you down and it'll be more likely that your fingers will slip off the string like this. That's the last thing we want to happen in this passage. So for this reason, um, I decided to do one, two, three on top here. The second example is from Prokofiev's second sonata. It was originally for flute and uh, piano. We're gonna look at the very, very end of the entire sonata, end of the fourth movement. There's a crazy riff full of perfect fifths all the way to the top. So, this is another one of those examples where you have a fast passage, um, you go all the way to the top, and you know, I just noticed both of my examples have the same high D at the top, and actually that was not intentional. I, for some reason, picked these two. So in this example, I'm actually not gonna talk about the high D. I mean, it's the same high D as Dan Juan, and I do it with the third finger for the same reason. I'm gonna talk about actually the perfect fifths and how they affect my finger choice. So we have a lot of perfect fifths here. Not easy to tune, but... 
there we go. So over here, in order to get the fifths as in tune as I possibly can, I do need to have my finger at a certain angle, especially in the higher positions. Uh, the strings are further apart from each other, the higher you go, and my fingers are not the, the thickest, as you can see. Uh, so I do need my finger at a certain angle here. Um, here's the thing, we have, um, after this, there's a third, if I go up, a, I choose to shift up a half step to play a third, right here, that one, I don't do two blocking the fifth and then reach for the fourth, because what happens is if I do second finger on this fifth, you see, in order to get this fifth in tune, I need my fingers in more or less in this angle and as you can see my fourth finger is really far away i would have to come around like this if i come around what happens the perfect fifth will not be in tune because the angle of my finger completely shifts and it becomes actually you can see this is not a good position at all to play a fifth you see it collapses the uh, joint right there um, if this was on one string that would be a different situation but because it's a fifth i want to keep my hand shape as uniform as possible so because of that i opt for the half step shift so it's the same finger just going up a half step it's very close up there and my third finger is able to uh, clear the e string for the third uh, whereas the fourth finger would not be able to clear the E string if I tried my best to keep the hand shape the same. So in this situation, I absolutely had to make sure to do the half step shift and to do the third finger, even though, of course, for other people, the alternative fingering would work. So in my situation, it does not go into two four. So I shift up a half step and do a third like this instead. So I only gave two examples in this video because there's a ton of music out there and there's a ton of things we can explore, uh, reasons why one would opt for a third finger instead of a fourth. Um, if I had to give you a bonus, we could look at the Sibelius Violin Concerto, you know, those fingered octaves. That's a good example, actually. But let me know, what are some other pieces of repertoire and examples where you had to decide between the third and fourth finger and you decided to go for the third finger and why? Let me know in the comment section below. If you got any value from this video, by the way, give me a quick thumbs up to support this channel. If you would like to discuss Discuss these topics on a deeper level and also get a summary of all of my content in both video and written form. I do have a bi-monthly newsletter that goes out twice a month. Links down in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell and happy practicing!